Welcome back, everyone. I'm out on the NTA9 today. What a pleasure. Thank you very much to Fowlers, as usual. Lots of updates for this bike for this year. Uh, more capacity, which gives it more power, more torque produced lower down. Not that it really needed it, but it's a welcome update for sure. It's lighter as well, four kilos off the weight. Loads more tech with a six axis IMU for lean sensitive rider aids. New frame design, new subframe, new wheels, new swing arm, radial master cylinder on the brakes. And then the visual redesign. I mean, let me know what you think of it down in the comments. I was saying on my other video that I think it'll grow on people and anyone who didn't like it at the launch, I'm interested to hear from you in the comments as to whether, uh, you know, it seems a little more palatable now you've gotten used to it. It certainly makes the previous gen look a bit dated anyway. Again, like the MT-07, I'd say it looks better in the flesh. Um, but what a thing. For nine grand, this is just a ridiculously fun bike. So I'm just picking my way back to Fowler's now, but there's some really good sections of road along the way. Perfect for enjoying all that this bike has to offer. I mean, that engine is just an absolute peach. And they put a new exhaust system on for this year that has an exit at either side underneath. And uh, they say it gives you a stereo soundtrack. It certainly sounds pretty flipping good for a stock system. Hopefully we'll get a bit of a um, gap in the traffic and I can apply the throttle for you to hear it properly. But yeah, so far my big likes on this bike are the engine, the sound, and also the quick shifter is pretty good. There's occasionally um, a bit of resistance going down the box. Uh, but largely I'd say it's good and for a nine grand bike to get it as standard that's decent if you ask me and I'd also say the brakes are good as well own branded Yamaha front calipers but they are radially mounted four pistons and then they updated it for this year it used to have an axially mounted master cylinder but it's got a radial master cylinder now and it just has a really good feel through the through the stroke there and for sort of blasting around on these little back roads, the suspension's easily good enough. Uh, it's KYB at the front and rear, fully adjustable. Uh, but you have got the option of the SP, of course, if you want to take things up a notch. So you get slightly up-spec versions of the fork. I think they get like a diamond-like coating, something like that. But it's an Olin shock. So if you do want to get a bit more out of the bike, and perhaps you expect uh, better suspension, you're used to more premium spec bikes, then you've got that option and it's only 1200 quid which seems pretty reasonable for Oli Shark and a Comfort C and cruise control and the fancy paint job and all that kind of thing. So this is the A369 coming back towards Bath from, you know, the Mendips. Not necessarily a spectacular road that's worth a trip in its own right but if you're passing through I did enjoy this earlier loads of good places to go off here as well you have got Cheddar Gorge but it's quite busy usually so you don't get particularly good um, clean runs up or down it but it is a spectacular thing to ride through and it's worth stopping off for a little coffee if you've got time as well I guess the only thing that's a little unusual about this bike is that uh, the bars are quite high up, you know, you've got big risers here. It makes it a really comfortable, practical riding position. But if you're buying your bike for sporty riding, you might prefer the position of uh, something like the Street Triple. And I'd say that bike feels better at the front end as well. The TFT dash is also quite small, three inches. So it's not like particularly big and bold, but I'm nitpicking here because it's nine grand and it's an incredible bike for the cash. How good does it sound on the quick shifter? Ooh. 
my tinted visor on but honestly I'm like grinning away here this is brilliant been riding like this all day today apart from when I stopped to do my review and I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed it I really like how they've got the throttle set up on this bike there's four riding modes one is the most aggressive down to four I think one two three are sort of getting more intervention from the rider aids whereas four actually cuts the power as well but I've been riding it in one all day because it's a dry day warm good road surfaces and I just think it balances liveliness really well without being choppy on and off the throttle or hard to manage. It's a very easy bike to ride quick. The MT-07, when I was riding it the other day, uh, that didn't feel great on and off the throttle. And granted, it's not the same system as this. It's a uh, cable throttle on that bike. No riding modes or anything. But it set my expectations perhaps slightly low for this bike. And... It's just absolutely not the case. Obviously, if you're like on and off clumsily, it'll surge a bit, but if you've just got a nice controlled application of that first mill of throttle, and then as you go up through the revs, I mean, if you're riding it in second and you're driving out of a fairly slow corner and you're down at four or 5,000 revs, uh, it, it doesn't struggle down there, but it's just got this lovely boost as you come up to 7,000 RPM where the peak torque kicks in. You know, coming up through 6,000, 7,000 revs, it really comes alive properly and starts to feel like properly quick. And uh, it's just a great implementation of the triple and the benefits of it. Somehow they've got it making more torque lower down in the revs than the twin of the KTM 890. Even though they're the same capacity, you would always imagine the triple's going to have a bit less, but it's got plenty of guts to it, and uh, it needs a lot less revving than the street triple for fairly equivalent figures. You know, I'm generally pretty positive about most of the bikes I ride, and I think a big factor there is that it's not like I'm a staff of magazine writers where you can cover every single bike if there's only one of you making videos you've got to whittle it down a bit and so i just try and pick stuff that i know i'm gonna enjoy so yeah most of the bikes i ride are pretty good and i've chosen something intentionally that i think is going to give me a good ride but occasionally bikes come up that surpass your expectations and i definitely say that this is one of them and my expectations were pretty high already you know it's widely regarded as proper good so it's got me wanting to try the tracer 900 i don't know if fowlers have their demo in yet they didn't when i was last in uh, but i bet that's a hell of a bike definitely one to add to the list well thank you very much fowlers that was excellent eh? Oh, there's my bike. 
looking super squeaky clean. I always say it's nice to get back on your own bike, but in this instance, nah, it will still be nice. Anyway, thanks for watching as always. See you next time.